Good evening once again. Thank you so much for keeping it with us and welcome to the second edition of News Tonight. It's me, Michael Jordan Lukomwa. Bank of Uganda has maintained its position, reiterating that... Oh, I beg your pardon. I will get back to that story later. First, Vice President Jessica Alupo has commended the Ministry of Science and Technology and Partners for organizing a successful Science Week exposition. The four-day event at Kololo Independence Grounds attracted thousands of people and provided ample opportunity for the innovators to showcase their works, interact with the public, and forge partnerships with mutual benefits. We have details to this. So this week helps us as a country in the promotion of science, technology, and innovation through exhibitions, information sharing, conferences, and media engagements. Uh, several stakeholders, collaborators, development partners, and other government institutions across the country have always partnered with government for the successful implementation of the National Science Week. So, Your Excellency, the way it is arranged is that uh, the Science Week is the week preceding the 10th. So it's a fixed event because the, the World Science Day is fixed and the Science Week closes on the World Science Day. Not just the disparity in resources, but also, and perhaps more importantly, the disparity in knowledge. And that closing the gap in knowledge is an essential part of successful development. However, to do this, it is crucial that innovations are protected and innovators rewarded for their creation. Globally, nations with valuable economies have their innovation ecosystems built around efficient intellectual property systems. Government is committed to do the same for Uganda, and we have made progress in this regard. Through the Uganda Registration Services Bureau, we have launched the National Intellectual Property Policy as a step towards giving innovators full protection for their creations. UBC News tonight. Bank of Uganda has maintained their position, reiterating that the country's debt is manageable and there is no cause for alarm. The 80 trillion debt, according to Bank of Uganda, stands at 50% of the gross domestic product, although the levels keep changing based on the foreign exchange rates. The central bank has also warned against commercial banks' borrowings with the view that the move is likely to weaken the currency reserves. This follows Bank of Uganda officials meeting with Parliament's Committee on Finance. Recently, the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development naived releases from the Consolidated Fund in a move to arrest the increasing level of inflation. This, accordingly to Bank of Uganda, was a step ahead of a better health for the economy. It should be noted that the first and second quarter of financial year 2022-2023 government released less of the planned 
25%, leading to a scarcity budget. So that was able to control more liquidity in the system. So it helped us at that time to ensure that the currency becomes stable. The move accompanied by other policies of government has prompted parliament to engage with officials of Bank of Uganda to understand the status of the economy. Ugandans expect service delivery, especially in the road sector, health sector, education. And because of trying to control inflation, all these sacrifices are being made for the time being, rightfully being made. While appearing before the Parliament's Finance Committee, the acting governor of Bank of Uganda, Michael Ating, and his subordinates were in place to defend the country's economic status. Is Bank of Uganda a signatory to these um, loans, the, the debts that we, uh, we, are, we are going to acquire from the river? Last week, Parliament approved a loan request by government to borrow 1.7 trillion from Standard Chartered Bank. However, Bank of Uganda warns against commercial borrowings with a view of weakening the country's currency reserves. We have a challenge in that the debt service in the next two, three years is quite big as a result of the commercial loans we took. They have a short repayment period. Uh, it would look like that we have not yet realized the necessary foreign currency to service and that's why our reserves are uh, partly affected. Accordingly, Bank of Uganda reaffirms that the current 80 trillion shillings debt, which represents 50% of the gross domestic product GDP, is manageable and no need to cause for alarm. If, for example, you look at our tax revenues, yeah. the debt service to tax revenues ratio, uh, it's very worrying, it's about 30%. So it means that for every shilling you collect as taxes, 30 cents goes on debt service. Bank of Uganda rallied members of parliament to preach the gospel of value addition by promoting local productivity and boost the country's import substitution. The markets in the region, I mean, are so big that if we were to promote the manufacture of exports, we would really get some good money. And that would ameliorate the foreign exchange pressure that we are facing today. Uganda's foreign debt stands at 47 trillion and the domestic debt at 33 trillion shillings, respectively. Daniel Mugoya, Gloria Gwitabinji, UBC News. Government is working on modalities for the rollout of the HIV prevention therapy, the long-acting pre-exposure prophylaxis, commonly referred to as PrEP. This medicine is transfused into an individual to protect them from acquiring HIV, and according to Uganda AIDS Commission, this will help to curb the number of new infections in Uganda. The 2021-2022 HIV AIDS Annual Review Symposium has come at a time when strides have been made in HIV care and treatment. One of the milestones include the approval of the long-acting pre-exposure prophylaxis, commonly referred to as PrEP, that helps to prevent one from getting HIV. As opposed to the one tablet taken every day, the long-acting PrEP is transfused into an individual to offer protection for a couple of weeks. According to Uganda AIDS Commission, the Ministry of Health is working on the rollout plan. That's hugely convenient. It means that you do not, instead of taking pills on a daily basis, once you have an injection, you'll wait two months before you have the next one. And uh, the adherence issues, issues related to stigma and discrimination, issues of convenience, you know, whether you, can, you will forget. You know you have uh, an opportunity to focus on other things and only wait, you know, in a period when this comes up. So definitely it has huge, huge advantages. But again, like I said, it will not be compulsory. It will be a method of choice. This initiative is commended for it will reduce new HIV infections. A long-acting carbotegrava uh, injectable prep or Kabele as uh, it's popularly known uh, is a very new initiative uh, where they infuse prep uh, into the body and uh, long-acting it means uh, it, 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 it stay, the drug levels stay in the body and offer protection against acquiring HIV for long, um, usually up to three months. 
Uh, it's a new initiative and uh, we are delighted that our government has uh, adopted it uh, as a new tool uh, for preventing HIV. And uh, what's more exciting is that uh, we've had struggles with oral prep, the tablets, swallowing a daily pill. Uh, people have not been taking them. People living with HIV have commended this milestone of long-acting ARVs. If you're now giving them that long time in option, it will really help to curb such a um, uh, that spread of HIV because they will be adhering to their medication. We are looking at ending new HIV infections. So if we are ending HIV infections and we are targeting such kind of groups, it will help. This year's three-day HIV AIDS symposium ended with stakeholders calling for a transition from donor-led HIV financing to government-led financing for HIV-related activities. This has awakened the discussion around the HIV AIDS Trust Fund. When we talk about sustainable development and we talk about the pillars of health, there is nothing that is going to happen unless we deal with HIV AIDS. When we talk about Africa Agenda 2063 and the pillars of health, we are only going to talk about Africa Agenda 2063 if in depth we are going to have funding. So Uganda has had a Uganda that Ugandan position must now be fed into the East African position. And I want to believe that there are Kenyans here, there are Ugandans here, there are Tanzanians here, and we must have meetings that are reporting meetings. But Parliament has already pronounced itself on this fact. For whatever reason, Minister of Finance is convinced that uh, this is not a, a, a fund that will be among the priority funds because there are some which have been set up. We agree. And from the commissioner's submission, we are actually more than enthusiastic to have a single treasury account. If that was what is happening, but we are aware some substantial amounts of HIV and AIDS resources don't go to your basket. So if you are to convince us and you are serious, put your foot down. Let all resources that come within the country have a one-stop center. The 2021-2022 HIV AIDS annual review has shown that HIV is still a public health threat with 15,000 new infections registered annually. Adia Nakuti, UBC. Parliament has passed a motion to have a select committee of seven members of the House to investigate the operations of the National Council of Sports and the related funding to the whole sports sector. This was revealed on the floor of the House by Honorable Suman Basalirwa, who expressed concern over the inconsistency of the funding Parliament allocates to the National Council of Sports, plus what is given out to the various national federations of the different disciplines. The Speaker of Parliament, Anita Mo, said that Parliament shall not add more money to the National Council of Sports before governments before governance issues are handled at the Secretariat. Uh, the committee of seven selected uh, is chaired by the Honorable Kanusu Rola. Other members on the committee include Honorable Kayemba Solomon, Issa Vidya Edi, Donald Katarikwa, Achibu Agnes, Margaret Mahokwa, among others. The National Council of Sports has for some time been on the sport over the allocation of sports funds. Federations like boxing and rugby have always come with claims that football as a game is given a lion's share, leaving other sports disciplines with little or totally no funds. Other sports federations were suggesting that money should be allocated according to performance at continental and international levels. In the actual sense, nothing was given. The inconsistencies in these figures reveal that there is something wrong. Much in the Chief Magistrate's Court has ordered, that investigate, has ordered the investigating officers in the case where Charles Olim, also known as Papa, and his wife Shamira Nachiemba, uh, to be sped up. Uh, Sipapa and Nachiemba are said to have robbed the South Sudan national Jacob Muller Rock of 1.6 billion shillings and are currently on remand. Charles Olim, 
also known as Sipapa, and his wife Shemia Nashimba have appeared at Machi the Magistrate's Court before Magistrate Esther Dikini for the mission of the case of alleged robbery against them. During court proceedings, prosecution told court that investigation is the matter still ongoing, thus asking for more time. The defense legal team objected to the prayers. <laughs> It's unfortunate that investigations have not even taken any step since the last time we appeared in court. Magistrate Esther Dikini ordered prosecution to speed up investigations. Geoffrey <laughs> Tudia Mosima, the lawyer representing the accused persons, says prosecution is actions infringes on the accused's rights. The state still has approximately two months to complete the investigations according to the law. However, still the delay in the same infringes on the right to fair hearing of a client. Prosecution alleges that Chai Solim aka Papa stole over 1.6 billion shillings from a South Sudan national, Jacob Mul Arok, laptops and smartphones. Rebecca Natongo, Susan Nabugode, UBC News. Lira City Business Community have threatened to shut their businesses for two weeks in protest of the slow progress of the USMID roads project in the city. They claim, the, they claim that the project which has exceeded its original project time has disrupted businesses for over a year, causing them huge losses. They asked and issued a six-week ultimatum for the contractor to clear all the roads within the city center for business to resume during the festive season. Have a resolution. Yes, it's the one which we A section of businessmen in Lira City led by Director Chambers of Commerce for Northern Uganda, Bosco Gwangidola, have noted with the concern the slow progress of the use meat project in the city. This is the day, but according to the design, yeah. The 37 billion contract that was awarded to Hal Nuhami Group and Abu Bekar Technical Services ended in August after 15 months with only 41% of work done. I'm just a local person. This is not a word. Huh? We, want, we want good roads. But after engaging with authorities, it was extended by another seven months. The agreed businessmen are worried that the volume of work left is much and that the disruption which has caused them huge losses over the years is not ending soon. They designed a bridge which did not have a drainage. They asked me to surrender part of my land. I gave them three meters. They should give back my land and compensation. Because I'm seeing there's no road going on. Usmid came to boost up the business, but under Abu Bakr, it is contrary to kill the business. And here they are saying we keep on extending, postponing the problem. The consultant may lose nothing, the city council loses nothing, everybody loses nothing, but we lose directly. You have seen the status of the roads. You have seen the soils which are hip in our veranda. You have seen. Those, those places where you get over two meters to, to climb into a shop. They say besides losing out sales, some tenants have also fled the buildings while others are battling with the loans in the bank. When the banks are going to take our money, our buildings, you people will not be part of it. The mayor will not be part of it. The contractor will not be part of it. It is we to suffer. But one thing you should must understand, those buildings in town belongs to us. And when we decide to strike tomorrow and close our shop, nobody is going to say no. We shall do it. They also ask for an intervention on the bridge on Oluol Road, which they say floods out whenever it rains. As you look at the bridge, the bridge is a little bit down and they still need to, to go up. You start on um, the, the, the other road, Boundary Road, you leave it there, you move to um, Oluol Road, you, you are doing patchy work. Levels were taken on all these roads and they are there. Freddy Owen, the city engineer and the project manager, says the delays were unavoidable. They are supposed to be removed this wall here. Like, like, huh? like, like two huh? meters. Here, here is the road. Here is the road. Now, all the facilities that we are going to put on the road, including walkway, including traffic lights, including drainage channel, they will fit within the 20 meters. People should understand this clear. The contractor, however, acknowledged the challenges and pledged to engage labor subcontractors to deliver within the ultimatum period. But the major challenges we have been having are the prices, the costs. When we quoted for these works, fuel was at 
2,800 at that time. That's why we have had stock out of materials. But what has really happened is a clear demonstration of lack of capacity to absorb funds. When it comes to time for lobbying for this contract, you kind of demonstrate that you have capacity. And you start running up and down. Yeah. You are in a park, you are in Moroto, you are here, and yet the capacity is one thing. Ed Yolwa, UBC here. News. The period that has been extended, nobody should make a mistake of dreaming that we are going to extend it. So, I'm here to announce that the MTN Kampala Marathon is back. And this year, we are running for babies. Uh -uh, uh -uh. Uh, to be clear, I am not talking about a baby. <laughs> No, <laughs> and neither am I talking about to be baby. <laughs> I am talking about these small dollars. <laughs> Run for babies in the MTN Kampala Marathon on Sunday, 20th November 2022. Dial star 165 star 77 hash or use the Momo app to register. create a good learning environment because a good school equals a better life raising voices meet professor petero he knows something every hustler in ug is gonna love oh see you see i was just trying to uh, get the documents to register for air telemanage yeah. you don't need the documents you just said a full register yes become a safer and more efficient cash-free business today easy no mixing your business money with your kameza money now that's efficient airtel money instant secure borderless It's better to foster respect instead of fear and pain. Cause a good school equals a better life. Raising voices. That's right. The Voice is coming to a city near you. From the 21st of October to the 10th of November, you get a chance to showcase your talent. Prepare a one-minute MP4 video of yourself singing and upload it to thevoice.africa to register. Make sure you have a valid Airtel number and if you're shortlisted, you will be contacted to come in for the live auditions. Well, don't just stand there. Let's go. Music your passion. Africa your stage. The Voice Africa. Connected by Airtel. UBC News tonight. Thank you so much for keeping it with us. Prudential Uganda, in partnership with Price Waterhouse Coopers, have launched the Best HR Practices Survey 2022 to recognize organizations with best human resource practices in Uganda. This is the second time the survey is happening after the inaugural. 2021 that was held. The survey is designed to collect feedback directly from employees on the 14 thematic areas that are of most relevance to management of human resources today. The feedback from the survey will be analyzed to provide insights into those thematic areas to enable employers to better understand the views of their employees across each thematic area and to inform actions and programs designed by employers to respond to feedback from their employees. Prudential Uganda CEO Tata commended government for taking interest and putting their weight behind the initiative to promote best practices in human resources management. I believe that this is the next installment that even looks at uh, 
a wider coverage. Uh, but first, we need to expand, uh, make sure that even within the private sector itself, the formal private sector, we increase the coverage in the formal private sector. The employer and employee will have access to, to the report and to see what the best practices are, and they can adopt those practices. On the part of the government, I think that they will uh, incorporate some of the best practices in the laws and regulations of employees and employers. Uh, on, on the whole, we, we feel that uh, this is a good opportunity to advance output, performance, and um, you know the growth of our country and economy. Speaking on behalf of PricewaterhouseCooper, Uthman Mayanja, the country's senior partner, explained that all the information received from the employees will be handled with strict privacy guidelines and is not accessed by prudential assurance. There are for any employer looking to retain uh, the highly skilled, highly valued employees must be able to operate with the best experts, not just in the Ugandan context, but at an international level. We are now operating in an internationalized labor market. Uh, the global village we were talking about many years ago is here with us. Speaking on behalf of the Office of the Prime Minister, Patrick Okello, Commissioner of Human Resources, said an initiative such as the Prudential Best HR Practices Survey shows the commitment and dedication of the private sector towards achieving the economic transformation of Uganda by highlighting practices that are best for the development of the collective human resources capacity, as he represented the Chief Whip, Honorable Hamson Obua. Without the human resource management component, nothing can take place. It is therefore on that basis that we, as the Office of the Prime Minister, welcome this launch and pledge our commitment to work with all the partners here present to ensure that the launch is a success, probably more successful than ever it was last year. The inaugural 2021 survey was conducted between October and December 2021. Uganda Bureau's Limited emerged as the overall winner of the HR Best Practices Survey 2021. Other notable winners from the thematic categories included Total Energies, ENP Uganda, DFC Bank, ABI Development, among others. This year, the survey will be conducted in between November and December. Sandra Kahonde, UBC News. The Mufti of Uganda, Sheikh Shaban Ramadan Mubadje, has appealed to the Muslim community in the country to consider choice of only candidates with an agenda of serving Islam in the most uh, in the forthcoming elections. Mubadje was addressing imams, district cadis, and Muslim delegates ahead of the National Muslim Council elections that start this Friday. The Electoral Committee at Uganda Muslim Supreme Council, Odi Kampala, confirms all is set for the National Muslim Council elections that will commence next week. Things have changed. Before, everybody would what? Would stand for any position. We used to put limits on only the upper what positions. But right from uh, the mosque level up to the national level, there are now qualifications attached to positions. The final meeting held to call upon the Muslim fraternity to embrace participating in these elections was addressed by the Mufti of Uganda Sheikh Shaban Ramadan Mubadji, his deputies, the Secretary General of Uganda Muslim Supreme Council Dr. Ramadan Mugalu, the Umaru Uman Nakaso Sheikh Yunusu Kamoga, District Card, Imams among other delegates. Mufti Shaban Mubadji reminded Muslims to put into consideration electing suitable candidates who will add value to Islam. I'm going to cut out grassroots election is beginning from the mosque. At mosque level, the voters to elect Muslims who are going to add to what is available, to add to the, the unit of Muslims, because Muslims are united, who, who, those who are going to strengthen the Muslim unity and also cooperate with the other uh, faith uh, communities. Uganda Muslim Supreme Council collaborated with Uma Muslims, led by Sheikh Yunus Kamoga, who urged Muslims to unite to set a strong Islamic faith base. <laughs>
ne mulenta abantu abachamu ne bajjam wano mukujana assembly ne mubale tanti batesezo busilamu tugeda kudde yokuwa ukana ku mtarabanga a combined sensitization campaign for the elections was the theme of the day tirabyenti chikuru nyo tetusobola kuleka police process ene gende mas ngale tubayise kubakunga no kubasaba mutulondere abantu abalunji abagenda okutwala ebigendere lwabya fe mu maso teri chikambo chake tubangaza twagala mulonda abantu abalunji abana je stream etambule bulunji the elections will start on friday 18th with the council leadership at mosque level in the same vein Mufti Mubaj has called on Ebo Muslims to give back to their needy. This was at a handover of 20 million shillings zaka to the beneficiaries. Zaka is one of the five pillars of Islam. So whoever has enough wealth to contribute to the zaka pillar is ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to pay that zakah. The chairman zakat Uganda Muslim Supreme Council Dr. Ziyad Swalehel Ubanga elaborated on the essence of giving zakah. Allah <laughs> I'm Ivan Juko for UBC News. The Uganda Atomic Energy Council has cautioned the Uganda Cancer Institute to establish a disposal plan for decommissioned radioactive equipment to avoid falling in the hands of criminal mind. This was raised in the ionization inspection at Cancer Institute by the Atomic Energy Council to ascertain safety and proper disposal of radioactive elements at the center. The Chief Executive Office of Atomic Energy Council, Noah Deogracia Siluwalida, wants the Uganda Cancer Institute to establish a clear plan of disposing of already decommissioned radioactive equipment. Radioactive equipment contains nuclear elements and can easily be altered by people of criminal intent to terror activities. Therefore, because there is an element of death, that's why they have to be protected and secured. Say so that such people cannot access them. If they do, they can uh, achieve their malicious uh, goals by doing such kind of things, manufacturing or developing what we call uh, radioactive dis dispersive devices, uh, data bombs, not only to scare people, but also to affect them and even kill them if the radiation from such is too high. Sources which become disused, which become no longer used. And these ones, they are decommissioned, and according to the guidelines, they are supposed to be taken back to where they came from. And the council has tasked Cancer Institute to develop necessary human resources to maintain and sustain operations of these radioactive machines to guarantee safety of medical workers and the general public. Budget, or oh, a major part of their budget to see that these machines are maintained because they are very expensive, yet they can be maintained and serve for a very long time until they are actually disused. So that one is out of question. They have to develop capacity, internal capacity to maintain them on a day-to-day basis. And if they cannot have that capacity now, they have to bring it in from out. But the major point is to develop their own, say so that such challenges can be addressed. The management of Uganda Cancer Institute is in the final stages of training and recruiting specialists to manage equipment to the expanding services for sustainability. Most of them are new and we saw many boxes of equipment around. Also, there are some which have been working and are still in very good condition. To manage this equipment, we are training by medical engineers. We have recently expanded our biomedical engineering department. We are recruiting more staff, but also sending staff to train outside the country so that they come back specialized 
to manage this, uh, this equipment. The institute appealed to the Atomic Energy Council for support in the ongoing exercise of establishing regional cancer treatment centers, especially in managing these sophisticated nuclear machines. The rationale for these regional cancer centers by 2025 is that we'll be able to access 85% of the patients who are suffering from cancer. We do not have enough human resource, but we are training and recruiting human resource. As you are aware, the Uganda Medical and Dental Practitioners Council gave us approval to undertake specialist training here at the Uganda Cancer Institute. Poor disposal and handling of radioactive elements hampers climate, human nature, and once accessed by people, people of ill mind can be utilized to build improvised explosives for terror activities. Abdu Nasili Lubama, UBC News. Let's take another break. On return, we'll be talking business news tonight. Uh, so, I'm here to announce that the MTN Kampala Marathon is back. <laughs> and this year, we are running for babies. Uh -uh, uh -uh. Uh, to be clear, I am not talking about a baby. <laughs> no. <laughs> and neither am I talking about to be baby. <laughs> I am talking about these small dollars. <laughs> Run for babies in the MTN Kampala Marathon on Sunday, 20th November 2022. Dial star 165 star 77 hash or use the Momo app to register. Welcome to Friend Stadium. Everybody's ready. Wait a second, not everybody. Come on, dude, it's the FIFA World Cup. You're going to lose your seat, the ritual seat, the lucky one. Losing more than a seat, your team is going to lose. Where are you, dude? The match is about to start. Your friends won't hold out much longer. Excuse me, excuse me. Finally, everything is in the right place. Hey, other hand. And you, do you have everything you need to believe? That's right! The Voice is coming to a city near you. From the 21st of October to the 10th of November, you get a chance to showcase your talent. Prepare a one-minute MP4 video of yourself singing and upload it to thevoice.africa to register. Make sure you have a valid Airtel number and if you're shortlisted, you will be contacted to come in for the live auditions. Well, don't just stand there, let's go! Music your passion. Africa your stage. The Voice Africa. Connected by Airtel. Business news tonight. The assistant commissioner in charge of private school and institutes of higher learning, George Mutekanga, has emphasized periodization of agriculture in schools. Mutekanga made the remarks at the award giving ceremony for the first National Agriculture Education Show held in Jinja, where Ndeje Senior Secondary School emerged winner. Being a backbone of Uganda's economy, the assistant commissioner in charge of private schools and institutes of higher learning, George Mutekanga, has echoed the need of refocusing and putting emphasis on compulsory teaching of agriculture. We have vocational subjects that are optional, that are very key, like agriculture. So my emphasis is to encourage the schools, to encourage the school managers, boards of governors, management committees, to ensure that they prioritize the importance of teaching of agriculture in schools at the lowest level. At the award-giving ceremony for the first National Agriculture Education Show that was held in Jinja at Ndeja Senior Secondary School, Motekanga said there is need to link knowledge the students have in agriculture to the 21st century. 80% of our people depend on, in one way or the other, from agriculture. So at the end of the day, we must encourage, we must appreciate, we must ensure that the community, the young generation, who form about 70% of this country, they must like and appreciate about agriculture. Moses Olok of Uganda National Inspectors of Schools Association highlighted what made Ndeja Senior Secondary School to win the Agricultural Education Show. To exhibit 
agricultural related knowledge. But within there, there was technology, there was innovation. You get me? There were there were there were there were there were there were there, were, there was a knowledge, there were skills, and all that was looked at within the exhibition. We looked at the essay writing. Because we had already sent the theme to schools with the letter that we invited them for. And the schools had already known countrywide the theme. So we wanted to see essays that would bring out one, the meaning, the intention, the inbuilt issues of, 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 of the theme. Dr. Charles Kahigriza, the head teacher and the senior secondary school, said the awards mean a lot to the school. So for us to be the, the champions of that uh, show, it means a lot to our school. It's a very big achievement uh, as a school and we take a lot of pride in it. And uh, we sure that we are going to maintain to do whatever it takes uh, to maintain our excellent performance. The awardees highlighted the key issues learned from the agriculture education show vowing to take agriculture far. Now among the lessons we did learn is to uh, change our mentality as the youth of today. You know formerly people, uh, agriculture or farming was known as a punishment, they punished to go dig or it was uh, known as the dirty work for those who have not maybe succeeded in school or what. But now you get to realize that since agriculture is the backbone of the economy, it's a sector that one can engage in at whatever level. You might not need to first graduate in order to engage in agriculture. It's a skill you can learn and engage in and you'll be benefiting. And most of the skills we learned are practical skills, like maybe vertical gardening. It was something that I had never known could happen, but now it's something I can put into practice. Minister of Education and Sports and the Minister of Agriculture at to organize the second agriculture education show with schools representing their district's status, among others, Sudat Kaye. UBC News. Ministry of Finance, Planning and Economic Development has set new parameters to guide in the implementation of projects for better returns. The Commissioner of Project Analysis and Public Investment, Hannington Ashawa, says that a feasibility study shall be conducted before a project is implemented to ensure efficiency. Ministry of Finance, Planning and Economic Development has set new parameters to guide in the implementation of government projects to facilitate efficacy for better service delivery. To eliminate all the inefficiencies we've been facing uh, by implementing projects that we have not studied to know their implications on the welfare and service delivery of, of Ugandans. Projects will compete and those with better returns and value for money will be admitted for implementation. An estimated 1% growth contribution is lost due to poor implementation of projects, thus the need to build contribution of public investment to bring returns. Now that we have a uniform system for government, everybody now will be... Uh, uh, enforced to, to use to use these prices and we hope then that now with proper com compliance which minister of finance is going to, to enforce uh, uh, then on the projects that are ready will be allocated budgets for a project to qualify for implementation it must undergo a feasibility study to assess return on investment no project that has not undergone a study will enter the public investment plan. What does the study help us? If the study helps us to show the economic, economic viability of that project, it shows us the returns. When we, when we, when we invest 200 million dollars in a road, these are the returns. All government ministries and agencies are required to follow these guidelines in formulating their budgets in the next financial year. Miriam Mumcha, UBC News. Welcome to the Living Room Stadium. It's the FIFA World Cup. 
The match is about to start. Food and drink ready. There's no space left for anyone. Come on, get your lucky chair. Take your usual spot. Even the puppy has one. It's preparation time. You can feel the tension in the air. And you, do you have everything you need to believe? Did you know that a cashless, secure, and convenient lifestyle is possible with Airtel Money Pay? Pay for your goods and services in the following simple steps. Dial star 185 star 9 hush. Enter the merchant ID. Enter the amount. Enter payment reference, for example, school items. Please enter PIN to confirm. You will receive a confirmation message for a successful transaction. Airtel Money. Instant, secure, borderless. The Uganda Under-20 Men's National Team, the Hippos, will play the final game of the tournament this Friday to determine who becomes qualifier of the championship. Uganda are through to the 2023 Under-20 Africa Cup of Nations after defeating Sudan in the semi-finals of the ongoing Sekafa Zono qualifiers. Uganda will play at the final tournament for the second successive time, having featured at the last edition of 2022. 21, I beg your pardon. About qualification, it's nothing much. It is about qualification, but just to cement it, to take the championship. But it was uh, the final was previous. So right now, it's about to win it and seal it for uh, for respect, for prestige of the, uh, of Uganda fans and football at large as a country. Is your thing and uh, just waiting for the day. Only even now we have just done COVID and to see what is happening, not like before. If there are more COVID players, then we plan again. So it's not a good uh, uh, type of uh, situation that you have to plan after COVID. So we are ready. Uh, we are here to compete and to take the trophy back home. Nothing much. That brings us to the end of news tonight. Thank you so much for watching right from 8 p.m. up to now. My name is Michael Jordan Lukomwa. On behalf of Newsroom, wish you the best of the night. And let's catch you tomorrow. I'll leave you with Molin Kenyana, who has the weather forecast report here. Well, good evening and a very warm welcome to the weather report for tonight. Thank you very much for watching UBC News. Now in the weather tonight, we're looking at more of wet weather conditions that continue across the country for several places. Now we did see a lot of rains for this evening, even this morning across the Lake Victoria Basin, much of Central, as well as the Western sector. And this was according to the position of the rain bearing clouds that are now over most places within the country. At the same time, we also have those local effects, especially the effect of Lake Victoria, the Elgon region as well, having more rains in that area. And we could be looking at similar situations even tomorrow. But let's take a look at our forecast for tomorrow. Now in the morning, we will start off with uh, more of isolated showers. Those will be across the left Victoria Basin as well as much of central. And we continue to see rains also for western Uganda, also around the Renzori area. We are also forecasting a rainy morning across the eastern part of Lake Victoria Basin, but eastern Uganda continues with sunny intervals, and that will be similar to the Karamoja region as well as central Uganda, but we do expect to have a little bit of rains that will be across West Nile. And later, as we head into the afternoon, we'll see more rains across parts of central and the Lake Victoria Basin. Quite a warm day for Nakasongola. We'll see temperatures going up to 29. We're also forecasting uh, rainy weather still for western Uganda and also Kasese will be quite warm at 28 degrees centigrade, similar weather uh, for Masindi. Now, eastern Uganda will continue to see those rains for the eastern Lake Victoria Basin, but we will also see rains picking up for Soroti at 30 degrees and also development of more wet weather activities for the Karamoja region and much of the western half of the country. Now, some of the cities that we have for you around the world, we're forecasting rainy weather that will be across Qatar. We're also looking at thunderstorms for Johannesburg, but quite a warm day over there at 27 degrees centigrade. Now, also rainy weather is forecast for Beijing. We'll see temperatures quite cold at 12 degrees centigrade. Well, that is it for our weather report for tonight. Thank you very much for joining us. My name is Molin Kenyana. Wishing you a good night. BC, 
इंस्पायरिंग यू गंदा Get connected today with the My Airtel 4G smartphone, the most affordable smartphone in Uganda. You get to enjoy free 1GB for one whole year. My Airtel 4G smartphone, your best value for money. Visit the nearest Airtel outlet today and get one at only 250,000 Uganda shillings. Airtel, the smartphone network. The Ministry of Health informs the public that there are confirmed cases of Ebola in Uganda. We however urge the public not to panic as the situation is being managed. The Ministry of Health further reminds the public to be on the lookout for any persons who may show signs and symptoms of Ebola. These include high body temperature, abdominal pains, diarrhea, vomiting, bleeding from the body openings such as the nose, eyes and mouth. Please inform the nearest health worker immediately if you see anyone with these signs and symptoms to prevent Ebola from spreading further please take the following preventive measures regular washing of hands with water and soap avoid handshaking and hugging avoid